Hi, in this video, you're going to learn how to make the counter sinkhole. This is the final part of three parts um, video on how to use holes. So if you haven't watched my previous three videos, please do previous two videos. If you haven't watched them, then please do watch them. You don't really need to know how to use those two um, holes if you want to land this one. They're pretty much not they have some similarities but we can reland them so but please do watch um so yeah as you can see here this is what a counter sink hole sort of looks like when it's split halfway so if i remove um the section view it sort of looks like something like this so this is what it sort of looks like it has sort of an angled level and it sort of has like a nice hole in here. So yeah, that seems kind of cool. So let's get to making it. So I'm going to rename my first part studio so I don't really get confused. I'm going to label this one example. So then I'm going to make a new part studio and then I'm going to create a sketch on my top plane. Then I'm going to hide my remaining two planes. I'm going to create a center point rectangle and dimension it to three inches by three inches. So three inches to three inches. So if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm trying to make a cube. Um, so I don't really want to mess with the sketch anymore. So I'm going to extrude it and make sure I'm on new. I'm on blind. So then I'm going to make a three inches make my depth three inches and then i'm going to confirm my extrusion hold on it didn't really work out so let's see oh i didn't select my regions to extrude okay so i'm going to click on the green check button then i'm going to go to isometric and yay our extrusion has been completed so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to my top plane and I'm first going to go to my hole to see what I actually need to make for my countersink. It's going to ask you what sketch points you want. I don't have a sketch point yet, so I'm going to create a sketch point really quick. So for my longtime viewers, they know that um, I usually don't really like to make it straight onto the origin. I actually like to sort of experiment here and sort of make sure that I get it um, and get it sort of right the first time I do it. So I like to sort of make it as close as I can and then go to my coincident constraint and constraint both of them together. And for some reason that's not really working out, but. Oh, okay. So it kind of did work. Um, no, it didn't, hold on. I don't know why. When I did it for my practice, it worked. So I guess on shapes being a bit finicky, Oh no, it did work. It was just that one, the origin was sort of at the bottom. Uh-oh. Okay, so let's restore that. So we know that it's completely on top. So the reason why I got confused was it this because it was not, it was sort of on a weird view where I could see only partial bits of it. So I assumed that they were sort of not overlapping. So that kind of makes sense. So um, I'm gonna go back to isometric because this is being annoying. And then I'm gonna go to my whole tool I'm going to go to my drop down and select countersink. I'm going to change it to blind. If you want your hole to go completely through and through, you can go and click on through. So that's what that's going to do is it's going to go, if you do blind, it's going to add on this dimension on how deep you want it. But if you do through, it's going to remove that dimension because obviously you don't need it. So I'm gonna select my point and there we go. So what I'm going to do sort of is I'm going to explain to you what each dimension does. So here, my first dimension determines the diameter of the smaller hole. So I want my smaller dimension to be um, two inches, no, not two inches, that is, yeah, two inches. So it's going to give me an error because your smaller hole can't be bigger than your bigger hole, right? Smaller holes are supposed to be smaller than smaller holes. Bigger holes. Wow, that's time to say twice as fast. So I'm going to make it 2.5, my bigger hole 2.5. So as you can see, my smaller hole is in two inches and my bigger hole is in 2.5 inches. So what this degree thing is, is it's basically how base deep your um, counter sink is, how deep you're sinking it. So let's just change it to 100 and see what happens. 
as you can see, it's become sort of deeper, more a bit more shallow. But if you make it like 90 degrees, what that's going to do is it's going to make it a bit more shallow. Let's see what happens to 50. So it's going to become even more. So let's try what, and see what happens at 2 degrees. So what it's, it's going to give you a, an error because when you hover over it, it's going to ask you to enter a value between 44.9 and 30. 135 so that's like how many degrees it can actually handle otherwise it would the hole would just the sink would be too small so i'm going to enter 50 just 50 because i like how deep that is so if you're wondering if you've, so you've seen this before it's sort of like an inverted um lego block i guess you could say it sort of looks comparatively to that it looks like the bottom of a lego yeah so yeah that's kind of how you make a countersink, but before we go, I want to show you how it looks from a section view. So I'm going to unhide my right plane, right click, and go to section view. So I'm going to click on that. So I've made my counter hole, and what it looks like from the front is this nice, deep, shallow, which is sort of 50 degrees, and this sort of forms a nice 50 degree angle, and this um, big hole is um, two, your big hole is 2.5 inches, and your small hole is 2 inches. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like my content, then please do subscribe and like my videos. Um, and please do share this channel with your friends or whoever wants to learn on shape. And yeah, that's it for this video. See you in my next video. Thank you so much. Bye.